Hello there and welcome back to the Chaps Guide. My name is Ash and I am your host on this journey through men's style, self-development and personal grooming. And today, well, we'd like to talk a bit about bringing more charisma into the way that you dress. Because, you know, if you are an intentionally well-dressed man or a fan of just looking classically smart, it's true the observation can be levelled that in dressing in such a way, you take away many of the elements in normal clothing which allow you to give an example of your personality, to demonstrate to people around you your taste and your character. Because in dressing classically smart, um, you will be wearing a charcoal suit, maybe a white shirt, a solid colour tie, maybe a navy suit uh, with a light blue shirt. And this way of dressing has very much become the corporate uniform of the company man of the modern era. And you know, if you walk through the streets of London, particularly the financial district, the city of London, every other gentleman who walks past you in the street will be wearing some version of that corporate uniform. You know, they will be wearing the white shirt, the dark coloured suit, the dark coloured tie, you know, the black uh, cap to Oxford or semi-brogue. And you know, you could, you could tick them off on a spotting list of all of the, the, the sort of facets of corporate clothing and you would, you would soon tick off your list within a few moments in the city because that's how everybody dresses. Uh, the same goes for your casual attire. You know, if we walk down the street in the modern era, the average man is wearing a pair of jeans, um, dark or light in colour. Uh, they're probably wearing a sweatshirt, they might be wearing a t-shirt. Uh, they might be wearing some form of white training shoe or sneaker. And that's the corporate identity of everybody, I say corporate, you know, the social identity of even the casually dressed man, let alone the formally dressed man. But it doesn't have to be that way. Now, whilst dressing within the boundaries of convention does mean that you are going to be wearing a sort of uniform. It doesn't mean that you have to be bereft of all of your personality, your character and your taste. You know, it doesn't mean that at all. We absolutely can bring little nuances of our, of our style into the way that we dress uh, and it'll bring your personality to the forefront. Now there are many opportunities to sprinkle just a little bit of your personality magic into the way that you dress. Absolutely, loads of opportunities. Remember, the devil is in the detail. It's all about those little things that bring the sparkle. But always remember the number one rule when it comes to gentlemen's dressing. Restraint. Right? Absolutely remember above everything else restraint because nobody wants to go the whole hog and end up looking as if you're a little bit offbeat, a little bit eccentric and you're not going to be taken seriously and it's going to be counterproductive to your goal of dressing stylishly but with a little element of your personality. Remember, what we're looking for here is sartorially elegant but with a twist of charisma. Now a key feature of your clothing, which is going to be important when it comes to portraying your, your taste, is going to be the colour that you employ within your overall outfit. Because, particularly with the accessories, because if you imagine you're wearing a grey suit, a charcoal suit, um, you're wearing a navy suit, it's almost like a blank canvas. Those accessories that you wear with that suit is what's going to draw the eye of the beholder who looks at you and draws an impression from you by the way that you're dressed. Now the charcoal suit in particular is an absolute blank canvas. You know, if you wear um, a, a sort of accented colored shirt instead of a white shirt, it puts a totally different direction on your overall clothing. You know, I'm wearing a pink shirt right now. You wear pink with charcoal, it absolutely changes the look of the clothing from stark and formal to a little bit more playful and certainly more wearable in less formal situations. Then we look at those other accessories. The pocket square, the tie, the cravat or the ascot, uh, and even deeper accessories than that, you know, the, uh, the boutonniere, a lapel badge, whatever you choose to wear with it, these bring elements of colour to your clothing which have a fundamental impact on the way that you will be perceived by others and they change the nuance of your overall package of clothing. 
No, there are other things which you can add into your ensemble of clothing which will alter the way that you look for a start using textures and patterns. These have a great impact because they break up the visual lines of your clothing. So if you're used to wearing quite solid dark colours, you know, introduce perhaps uh, a shirt which is herringbone in nature or introduce a woven tie. Those textures alter the way that the, the light, the colour, reacts with your clothing. There'll certainly be uh, less reflection off a white shirt, for instance, if you're wearing a textured shirt. And it does do the, uh, the, the service of reducing the formality of the clothing and adding a little more character, a little bit more of that personality we're seeking to inject in our clothing. A simple thing that I do all the time, I frequently wear a woven tie because the woven tie, for me, it's a little more playful, it's a little more individualistic than the plain silk tie uh, and for me I wear a woven tie when I'm trying to show to people I'm not in my most formal moments and you often see me in video speaking to you wearing a woven tie because these are the perfect situation you know I'm not out on display trying to project my best personal image yet um, I want to make it look a little bit different and bring some color and some character to my clothing whilst we're on the subject of neckwear I'm wearing one today, something which is lesser worn, a cravat or an ascot, because these really do allow you to inject a little bit of colour, a little bit of texture, a little bit of pattern into any clothing that you're wearing in the right circumstances. Obviously, it's not a formal item of wear. I tend to wear a cravat in informal moments where I'm just trying to um, bring some interest into my clothing. The cravat, it's not worn by many. You know, some people loathe them including my wife, some people find them fascinating and it's absolutely a conversation starter every time you wear a cravat and you're in a public situation. So a bow tie will do the same thing. Um, I'm not a personal fan of the bow tie because for me uh, they do signify a lot more formality than a cravat and they kind of do crest on the borders of eccentricity uh, and you know oddity to a degree. If you love a bow tie, by all means, you know, knock yourself out, wear them. For me, a cravat is the route to go. Casual, light, um, comfortable as well, which is really important. And again, capable of injecting colour, interest and visual bounce to anything that you wear with an open collar. Also on display on my outfit today, you will see a pocket square. Another fantastic way of introducing colour into your clothing. Um, you know, there are a myriad of different pocket squares you can choose from and all, if you marry them nicely with your, with your tie or your shirt, if you're going open collared, or your cravat, you know, they can really bring pop to your clothing. A grey suit is an extremely plain and bland thing to wear. You add a pocket square to that suit, totally changes its dynamic. Uh, and it, you know, it's something which you purchase once, you will own for the rest of your life. A pocket square never wears out. So invest in a nice little collection of silk pocket squares. They'll make all the difference to the clothes that you wear, both formally and informally, as I am now. You know, you can, if you're wearing a sports coat, a blazer, a pocket square, it's an, it's an opportunity missed if you don't wear one. And today, I mean, I don't often wear one, but I'm wearing a boutonniere. To prove the point because I think a boutonniere um, although again bordering on the eccentric if you're not too careful don't overdo it you know remember the word restraint it should be hanging over us during all of our thought processes when we're trying to introduce charisma into our clothing but a boutonniere again interesting visually you know impactive certainly introduces a little punch of colour. I've only got two or three. I've got a red one, a blue one, uh, and I think I've got a pink one. And I just reserve them for occasions like this, where if I was going open collared and I wasn't going to wear a cravat, unlike I'm wearing today, you know, that boutonniere just fires in a little bit more colour, a little bit more interest, and it tells the person looking at me, assessing me, drinking me in with their eyesight, that I've gone that little step beyond the ordinary because I'm wearing something which 99% of the population won't bother to do. I'm wearing a boutonniere. It's a useful tool in your toolbox, but you know, again, remember, restraint. Now there's not many occasions where you'll find a style video where I comment on in which I don't make reference to wristwatches, 
possibly jewellery, because these are interesting sort of side accessories to a, a gentleman's outfit, which says a lot about them. You know, particularly, let's talk about a wristwatch. I've always got a watch on my wrist for two reasons. One, tells the time pretty good. Secondly, it tells people something about me. I always wear an automatic wristwatch. I like wristwatches. It tells people that, yes, you know, here's a chap, he takes interest in a timepiece. He likes an automatic watch. It doesn't matter what the brand is, right? There is no snobbery here. If you're wearing a wristwatch that you uh, enjoy wearing, it tells the world a little bit about you. It's entirely different to wearing a smartwatch, which is kind of bland and featureless. Uh, whereas, you know, a wristwatch, particularly if you're an aficionado of wristwatches like I am, it's a conversation opener. If I meet somebody and see that they're wearing, you know, a, a Swiss watch or a watch which I have knowledge about, I will make a comment on it. People do the same to me, it's a conversation starter. So I never miss an opportunity to pair a wristwatch with my clothing. Not dissimilar to jewellery. Now, I'm not a fan of jewellery, so for me, the watch is the only sort of pseudo jewellery that I will wear. But if you are a jewellery fan, you might wear a bracelet. Uh, you might wear, you know, um, something around your neck, uh, a pendant or something, if you're wearing an open collared shirt. These things tell people something about you in exactly the same way that your rings, if you wear them, tell something about you. Um, you know, if you wear a wedding ring, it immediately tells the world you're a married person. Actually, I don't like wearing rings. I am married, have been for a long time, but I've never worn a wedding ring. So, you know, it's, it's horses for courses. If you enjoy jewellery, by all means, wear something. If it tells something about your personality, but it's not necessarily, you know, de rigueur. You don't have to do so if you're like me and you don't enjoy wearing jewellery. Now, when we're talking about injecting charisma into the way you look, let's not forget outer clothes as well. Particularly as it's a really hot day here in the UK, I am going to put on my hat just to protect my bare bonds from the sun. And a hat, of course, regardless of the time of year, if it's summertime, you know, you can wear a paper hat like this one or a straw hat. In the wintertime, a fedora, trilby. And if you've got the cat, you know, enough character to do so, a bowler hat, um, they really, really inject some interest into your clothing. They make you stand out from the crowd. They make you look taller. They've, there's so many positives to the hat, aside from its practical functions. You know, it's keeping the sun off my head. If it was winter, it would keep the rain off my head and keep the warmth in my body. So hats perform a really fantastic function for you if you're interested in adding character to your clothing. The overcoat as well. You know, so many people these days, they wear a wonderful suit, but then when they're walking around in the city or wherever they may live or they want to display themselves, um, you know, they'll wear an anorak or some sort of inexpensive waterproof outer garment. Invest in a quality overcoat. This says a huge amount about you, particularly if you're sartorially interested. Because remember, an overcoat will be expensive. Yes, it will. But it is most likely going to last you for decades. It's going to be the longest lived of all of the things in your wardrobe, most likely. So it's well worth thinking about investing in some outerwear. And when you're wearing that overcoat, you know, the scarf that you wear, particularly if you've gone for a neutral coloured overcoat, which is the best thing to do, bit of grey, bit of navy, can wear it with everything. But to jazz that overcoat up, wear a scarf. That's where you get to inject the colour, the texture and the patterns uh, in your outer clothing. Don't forget the little things as well, the gloves. I always wear lovely leather gloves and you'll be amazed in the winter when I do these videos, the number of comments I get from people who ask me where I buy my gloves. I buy them from an artisan glove maker in Somerset in England and I always pass on a, uh, the link if people want to know, but I always get asked about my gloves because they're a lovely oxblood red colour. And, uh, you know, it just goes to show it makes a difference. People notice it. They make comments about it. Your footwear, particularly your shoes, make sure, and it doesn't cost you virtually anything, to put a good shine on your shoes. Because this says a lot about you as a person. Displays your character. You know, if you love a mirror shine on your shoes, tells people you pay attention and put the time and effort into your clothing. The number of times, because I always mirror shine my shoes, the number of times people have said to me when they meet me, did you used to be in the military? Because they look at my shoes and they draw an assumption because they're so, so shiny that I was somebody who came from a background in which, you know, well-shined shoes was an important thing. 
And they're absolutely right, I did. But it goes to show people notice and they'll pass comments on it. And that's why we inject that little bit of character and a little bit of interest in the way that we dress. Now, if you work in an industry in which you're provided a uniform and there's an incredibly strict dress code, that means you can't mess around with it. You can't add little items that display your personality. You may not even be allowed to wear a lapel badge or anything like that, which says something about you. There's one thing that you can change, which nobody can control. And that's the way that you smell. By adding a signature fragrance to your overall package, you will be telling people a little bit about you. You know, whether it's wearing a nice fragrance, um, you know, a summer fragrance, something zesty and citrusy, as I would wear at this time of year, or something with more depth and rich charm and character for the winter time. You know, people will walk into the room that you're in and they will discover your fragrance and they will know that you're a person who takes interest in perhaps they can't tell that you're interested in the way that you look because you're wearing a uniform but they know you know that you are cultured in the way that you smell and you'd be amazed as I say people make loads of comments upon a gentleman's fragrance in exactly the same way as they will about the way that you're dressed because the olfactory sense is right there behind the visual sense when it comes to you know putting your personality across anyway chaps i hope you've enjoyed this gallop through all of the things which i recommend that you can introduce into your overall clothing which will add interest character and a little zap of your personality into the way that you dress but never forget the key word, all right? Restraint. I'll say it again, restraint. Don't go nuts and throw everything at the battle. A little bit at a time, one or two little elements of the personality into your individual clothing and you'll be fine. Don't go mad though. Okay, so if you have enjoyed today's video, please do us a favor, give us a thumbs up and don't forget, leave me any comment you'd like in the comment section below. I would love to hear from you. Until the next time, take care of yourselves and I'll speak to you again very soon, looking stylish with a little hint of charisma as you go on your way. Until then, take care. <laughs>